Hello there, mechanical keyboard nerds, or non-mechanical keyboard nerds, as is the case with the Sablut H1. It's not mechanical, but it does have a really highly customizable Stream Dock feature. Not Stream Deck, but Stream Dock that I'm excited to check out today. It looked really cool. I wanted to look at it. So in this video, we are going to unbox it. We're going to sound test it. I'm going to type on it for like a week and then do Pete's thoughts and review. So let's dive in. Off the dock. So let's take a look at what's in the H1. There we go. This is on Indiegogo right now for $99 pre-sale. By the time you're watching this video, that campaign may have ended and it might be up to 150, 120 range. I don't remember what the final price will be, but right now it's like about a hundred bucks. So a few things, obviously the manual on this one, you're gonna wanna keep. The reason being is, well, there's more things going on here with the Stream Dock software and of course, it'll show you how it's not actually as big and thorough as I thought it might be, but there's obviously stuff here that you're going to want to pay attention to. By the way, at the time of this recording, I have no idea where to download the Stream Dock software, not Stream Deck, Stream Dock. It's very hard to search for on Google. I emailed Sublute. Maybe they can help me find it to download and test out. We'll see. Standard uh, cable here, USB, USB-C, but it does come with two adapters. Now, I did see this on the website. I'm pretty happy about this. This is cool. Obviously, you can use this wherever you would plug in a lightning adapter. No idea what that would be really. I guess a phone. And uh, a, a normal USB 3.0 to USB-C adapter. These are cool. I love these, especially if you're on a Mac and that's all the inputs you have. Really handy just to not need anything else. Plug it right on there to the normal USB cable and you're good to go. I like that. I like adapters like that. These are like 15 to $30 on Amazon sometimes. So let's take a look at the keyboard itself. This is, if I can get it out, this is a low profile keyboard-ish, so they say. And first impression, yes, it is low profile. I'll give you this angle right here towards the end, the bottom of the keyboard. On the back, it does raise up a bit naturally. It gives a little bit of an angle, and of course it's probably gonna have feet. Yes, it does. Uh, not tri-fold feet, just, uh, one angle there, or two, I guess, flat, and then this, which is seven degrees foot on the other side, but pretty low profile. Second thought, it is very lightweight. It is extremely lightweight. I guess is I guess this is what you want if you're doing a wireless keyboard, which this is, and you can use it for a lot of different stuff like streaming. You might want to like move it around easier. It's extremely lightweight. It doesn't move around easily, which is good. It does have, yeah, silicone pads on the feet, but I am noticing it doesn't have four of them. It doesn't have any on the top. There's no there's no dampening that'll help it from moving around the table. It's just on the bottom. Two on the bottom, but not on the top, which is a little, maybe a little disappointing. It doesn't move. It's very sturdy and straight, but again, the more sound dampening, the better. And since it is so lightweight, I would want it to hold down to the table really well. So right before the sound test, I will say uh, these are not mechanical switches in here. This is optical. This is, uh, I think they're scissor switches. You can go look up what that looks like, what that means on the internet. Full numpad, obviously. And then the stream portion. There are no, it's not the same sort of switch under here, I'm guessing. It sounds a lot different. It feels a lot different. These are very, very stiff, foamy, patty, which is not bad. Obviously they show nothing because they're LCDs, LEDs. I'm not sure which, uh, which will be customized via the software. Yeah, okay. Um, anything else? Wow, this is like completely blank right here on the back. That's interesting. There's nothing else going on with this keyboard. There's a USB-C on the left side of the keyboard over here. It's really huge, but very lightweight, very plain. This could work in like my old accounting jobs when I was in corporate America, very office-y. Okay, let's move over and do a sound test.
All right, let's chat about the Sublute H1. I'm gonna give you my bottom line first, and then I'm gonna do three pros and three cons. So here's the bottom line. So here's the bottom line. Little Lion King reference for you. If you don't mind the switches, i.e. you don't mind that it's not a mechanical keyboard, it's very functional, it's kind of fun, but just a little too expensive. I'll repeat that. If you don't care that it's not a mechanical keyboard, it is very fun uh, functional and fun, just a little too expensive. Not a lot of too expensive, just a little bit. Let's dive in a little bit further. So three pros. Number one, the Stream Dock software. I'll provide a link to this. I can find it anywhere on the internet. I found it in the manual finally. I'll put a link to it below the video. Anyways, I thought it was gonna be a little sketchy at first, uh, just cause it's made by this company, never heard of them, whatever. It's actually really good. I was very pleasantly surprised with just the sheer functionality that you can get out of this thing. Forget streaming, just all sorts of keybinds and macros and shortcuts and lots of stuff. Operation flows, do this, then this, then this. Really, really powerful, very surprised. Layers that you can customize. I uh, you know you can't see that very well from this video right here. Lots of different stuff you could do. You can also download plugins or different functionality from the internet from their community, from the company. There's lots of different stuff that doesn't come stock. I was really surprised with how good the Stream Dock software is. I wasn't expecting it to be, which is why I was surprised. But alas, highly functional, highly functional. An additional like 15 keys here that you can do a lot of stuff with on your computer. That's a big pro for this keyboard. Other than that, the other two cons are really simple. The LEDs, it's still just a cool idea, right? This doesn't happen on a lot of keyboards or even macro pads. It's still a pretty cool idea. And with a little bit of effort, you can customize this to look really cool, I think, and be highly functional. Of course, you can choose your own icons. You can make your own images if you want or whatever. It's pretty cool. And uh, the last thing I'll say is it feels and sounds good for a optical keyboard, not mechanical. I, of course, prefer mechanical, but it doesn't feel terrible. Like, it's kind of fun, right? It's a little bit clacky and clicky for these switches. It doesn't feel really mushy. There's actually some stuff, some substance here. It feels pretty good for an optical keyboard. Now let's get into the three cons. And I gotta tell you, they're, it's kind of important. So I'm actually gonna close the Stream Dock software on my computer and watch what happens here. You can't use it. These don't do anything. You have to have that running in the background at least, it's kind of like in the background when you alt tab, it doesn't actually show up. You have to navigate to it. It's kind of annoying, right? Like I don't wanna have that stream doc software running all the time on my computer. If you were just using this for streaming, that's fine, right? Okay, launch the software, you're fine. But if you're gonna do anything else with it, you don't want that running all the time on your computer, at least I don't. That's a big, that's a big con in my book. Again, maybe you care about that, maybe you don't, but whatever. Con number two, it's just a little too pricey. Even the, the early bird discount at the time of this recording, it's like $40, $30 off. It's like bucks. For a mechanical keyboard, that's a steal. That's budget range, right? But what if one of these switches messes up? It's not easily replaceable. And then you're losing like $99. This is what you're paying for right here, right? The Stream Dock software and this LED pad over here. This is totally boring. I mean, it feels okay, but it's, it's boring, right? It's just a normal black, no fanciness, no nothing optical keyboard, super boring and bland. This is what you're paying for. And if you're not gonna use this, don't buy this keyboard. If it were $50, I mean, early bird, right? $50 instead of $99, that would be really great, I think. That's a pretty good deal. But if you mess up any of these keys, they're really hard to replace. You get some sand in here, some dirt. I know what you guys do in your basements. Uh, it's just a little pricey for what you get. It's not a mechanical keyboard. If it was a mechanical keyboard, this would be so solid. It'd be really cool, but it's not. It's optical. And the last con is that it's not wireless. I thought it was. I thought I remember reading that it was on their website or whatever. No, that's not. <laughs> or if it is, I can't figure out how. There's no buttons for that. There's no Bluetooth pairing that I'm aware of. It's wired only. It's an optical keyboard. It feels good. It's very lightweight. This is what you're paying for, straight up. And if you're not gonna use this or you're not gonna use it very much, then don't buy this keyboard. That said, if you don't need it to be mechanical and you do like this and you don't mind the software running 24 seven, has to be running, then 
it's actually way more functional than I thought it was gonna be. So that's a that's a good thing. That's a good note to end on. The StreamDoc software and this little pad right here actually functions really well when the software is running. Hakuna Matata. Thank you guys for watching. I know, I'm a little throw, but I got it in my head now. Thank you guys for watching. Keep news here. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you like mechanical and non-mechanical keyboards. Although I wager most of us are mechanical folks, myself included. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll see you next time on the channel. Adios.